10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Fatima Hussein. I'm a geochemist here at MIT, your curiosity correspondent, and I'm also the mad scientist in this instant photograph. A technology developed by Polaroid's Edwin H. Land just next to MIT's campus in 1947. This camera was a game changer in photography. Instant film cameras introduced the idea that you didn't have to wait to see what you captured. Now, instant film is being used in another revolution this time in the medical world. Uh, that, Meet that MIT professor be, Jim Collins. Um, kind of riser He's an engineer you know, turned bioengineer. Um, he and his team developed devices to detect diseases yeah, yeah. around the world. There is a growing need as the world's population is increasing to better diagnose particularly pathogens. A pathogen is any microorganism that makes you sick, like a virus or certain bacteria. In many cases, these tests need to be inexpensive and easy to use, and in many cases also best if you could see the output by eye. One of these tests is InstaDX. It's a hospital in your pocket. Okay, not really. Before Professor Collins and his team invented InstaDX, you had to go to the hospital to find out if you were sick. But this would be used in a setting in which the more bulky, expensive, more difficult to use diagnostic machinery is not available, um, so more under-resourced areas. But how does it work? The Collins Lab used the same phenomenon that makes fireflies glow, something called bioluminescence. When InstaDX detects a disease-causing pathogen, the microscopic things that make you sick, remember? Its bioluminescent detector begins to glow. Sounds good, right? We're all set. Right? Nope. In InstaDX, we can't actually see that short-lived bioluminescent glow ourselves, so the Collins lab had to think. After many brainstorming sessions, they thought about recording that glow using, wait for it, instant film. Ooh, didn't see that coming, did you? Instant film uh, provides us with multiple capabilities. One, it's inexpensive. Two, it gives us a fast readout. Three, it's easy to use. And four, it's cool. Here's your challenge. Think of a medical problem that you and your friends want to work on. Once you've agreed on one, research that problem and take a look at the current tools used to diagnose, manage, or treat it. Are there issues with any of these tools? Are they clunky, hard to use, or too expensive? Then, think of a way you can design a new version of one of those tools that solves an issue. This could mean redesigning a tool, improving a tool using existing technologies, or even coming up with a brand new tool from scratch relevant to your team's medical problem. We want you to reveal new ways of doing things in the medical world. But be warned, this process probably won't go smoothly. Professor Collins and his lab have to try again and again before they achieve success on their projects. That's just the scientific process. And I encourage them to recognize that the great, 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 great majority of scientists out there are not geniuses. They're people who work hard and who believe in themselves and believe in their ideas and, and will go past the challenges and the failures. And I hope the young folks out there will see science and engineering as a career option that's just tremendously exciting and very satisfying because we can help so many people and, and our world needs us. Now let's get out there and see what we can reveal.